Victor Hugo said that there's one thing that is stronger than any of the armies in the whole wide world. And that is an idea whose time has come. And I say that come as you are in this exact moment in time, for there is no other, there never will be anybody more exquisite than each one of us, as we are in all of our perfection. Perfect, golden light. And when we really listen and hear and open up to the words of that song, it's like, let's just stand up and party. There's nowhere else to go. Right? When we're in agreement with that and respecting and honoring and giving one another the dignity of our own process, perfect in this moment wherever we are. No need to be anyone different than we are right in this very moment. You know, I have people say to me all the time, are you always as happy and full of life? And I'm like, the truth is, yes. Yes, I am. And it's a process. Because I'm saying the truth. Even when I feel broken, I've had enough experiences now to know that, oh my goodness, this is coming for my release. This is coming so that I know the truth of who and what I am, which has nothing to do with what I was told by anybody other than spirit. Spirit, God, living, breathing, presence, Holy Spirit, whatever we want to call it. Power, presence, harmony, peace, joy, love, a million names, infinite names for God, infinite names for good. Bless you. You see, yes, I did bring my magic wand today. I brought my magic wand because it's such a powerful reminder, a powerful symbol. That's all. That's all we are. Look at this. We are beautiful symbols of the one power and one presence in all the universe that we call God. Joy, good, harmony, peace, fill in the blank. We are incarnate, giving expression to God. And so here's my magic wand that's a reminder that magic is simply manifest all good in consciousness. That's all it is, and I'm in charge of this. I'm in charge of this. My brain doesn't have to live me unless it's completely on board knowing the truth. When we align ourselves with the cosmic energy and know that we are perfect and golden and nothing is wrong with us. And so I've been playing with Deepak Chopra's 20 spiritual lessons. And in Chattanooga, I just completed the seven-week series on his other book that was written a year before this, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, a.k.a. Life. Deepak's got it going. You know, 1994, he writes The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. 95, he writes The Way of the Wizard. And this past year, he writes You Are the Universe. I said that the first time I came to speak here on June 4th, that we are each the universe showing up, out picturing as these beautiful, unique expressions of God. Anything that comes in between us and the one power and one presence in all the universe is a lie. Anything I'm talking about that comes in between us that would make us think that we are anything less than holy, perfect, whole, and complete. And we started the first time back on June 4th, I said one statement 
that we could breathe into, accept, and know, and walk out those doors and never look back. And that is that the whole banquet is in the first bite. The whole banquet is in the first bite. All that could ever be. We are a holographic universe. Every single part and parcel is within each one of us. Nothing is missing. And then I talked about in the second time I was here, I mentioned something about how wholeness has no opposite. You know, I had to wrap my mind around that to really get it. And the thing is, if we say that God is all there is, that we are each perfect, whole, and complete, what could be the opposite of wholeness? Nothing. There is no opposite of wholeness. You're either in or you're not. And even if you think you're not, you are. Funny, it really is. Even if you think you're missing something, even if you think you were born in original sin, the truth is you're not, and it doesn't matter. You, we either wake up in these bodies and we experience it in this physical world reality, or we're going to die to these physical bodies and we're still going to be living in the truth, which is good. Sometimes we just have to go on faith. Sometimes we just have to open ourselves up to believe that there is something more that has perhaps been hidden from us up till now. And this week, I'm talking about Bringing the shadow, all of those hidden aspects within us, bringing the shadow to the light. You see, when we were told anything other than we're perfect, whole, and complete, we bought into that on some level. On some level, we thought, wow, I thought I knew that I was perfect. Think about the baby. Because Deepak always refers back to the baby. The baby's instinct is just wow, wow, wow when it wants something. Happy, happy, happy when he gets it. It's not thinking, I'm going to cry and nobody's going to come. It just keeps on and keeps on and keeps on and it gets it. A baby in all its innocence just knows it's perfect. Until I would say average, and this is different for everyone, but average around age four, we start redefining ourselves. We start hiding parts of ourselves. Ooh, ooh, that's not okay. Ooh, it's not okay to ask for what we want. Maybe what I want isn't even okay. We start getting conditioned because of the people around us who were also conditioned by the people around them and on and on and on, ad nauseum, right? It just goes back and back and back. That our parents did their best and their parents did their best and their parents did their best. The thing is, today, today, thank God, is a new day. That we are learning more about who and what we are that we do not have to be defined by a box. We have to live our life as if there were no box and open ourselves up to realize that, do you think we were just sent here to suffer and struggle? Some would say. And that is a choice. That is an option. I beg to differ. I don't believe that's true. And so I show up with a headband and a witch's hat on it. First of all, I didn't want to mess up my hair. <laughs> and my wise owl on, because those are reminders of the truth of who I am. And I pick books like The Way of the Wizard, because it's true. I am a wizard. I am a wizard. And so are you. I am magical, and so are you. When we know it's all good, we use it for our good. One of my favorite things, Jamie, from the University of Santa Monica, is that I use everything for my growth and upliftment. I use everything in my life. I don't care what it is. 
I've used every single thing in my life for my good. The things that I felt broke me, I used it for my good. I took the time to look at it. I brought the shadow to the light. I decided that I didn't want it to be true that something was wrong with me. I decided I didn't want it to be true that I was defective, that maybe someday I would get it. And kept beating my head, you know, myself over the head of like, when are you going to get this? When are you going to get this? I said, whenever I get it, can I be okay with that? And so the magnet on my refrigerator, one of my favorites, the magnet on my refrigerator that reminds me, well, I have several, but one is gratitude and acceptance always work. Because when I can wake up in the morning and be grateful for this yet again, another new day, that I can get to know myself and accept that wherever I am is perfect, it is in that acceptance. And I'm sure many of you agree with this. It is in the acceptance of wherever it is that I am that actually something else opens up, right? When we stop fighting where we are and where everybody else is, pointing fingers and blaming and take personal responsibility to realize that I am at choice. I get to choose how I'm going to respond and react. And we get an infinite number of opportunities every day to practice that, right? Every single day, we get to practice being the present, being loving, being in acceptance, being grateful for another opportunity to be here. We get to practice the presence of looking at whatever we were told and asking ourselves those million-dollar questions. Is it true? Is it true? If so, carry on. If not, bless it, appreciate it, do my forgiveness work. And Deepak talks about several exercises in this one lesson, number 10. He talks about being mindful in the moment when something's happening inside that doesn't feel so good. You know, all of a sudden, smiling, driving down the street, and something happens in front of us, and then boom, something gets triggered, which has nothing to do with the guy who flipped us off at the stop sign. Nothing. It has to do with something within me that is calling for my attention. Something's calling me. Something's calling me to wake up and stop that rote, reactionary place of being, right? Where we would go on and experience another example of someone being against us and another. It's all for our good to wake us up. That's why I can stand here and say, in truth, bring it. Bring it. I couldn't say that before because I was too afraid. Do you know what I'm talking about? I was more afraid for my safety than anything else. I lived most of my life fearing for my safety. My prayer was, God, help me be safe today. Now my prayer is, Gandhi taught me this one. God, may I be courageous enough to do what's mine to do. That's my prayer now. I don't need to be safe or saved from anything. All I want to do is what I came here to do. And that's to share the love and the good. And I can't do it if I'm afraid of the boogeyman. I can't do it if I'm afraid that some black magic or darkness is going to come and get me. Can anybody relate to that? I was afraid of the boogeyman under my bed and in the closet in my 40s. I'm like, for sure, I know it's under there. And something happened. Something shifted inside of me one day. It was like this spiritual awakening where I realized that the boogeyman and the demons and the devil and 
All those things I was told were not real. Not real. And I decided that I was going to be in charge of my reality. Hence the magic wand. And I will tell you something. Each one of us is here on purpose, for a purpose. And that's all we have to do. I love how Deepak says that when his kids were little, he taught them how to meditate by age four, to listen within. That's all meditation is, listen within. You know what he said to them? This is awesome. Pretend you're a kid right now, and you're hearing this for the first time, and you don't know anything else. He said, all I want you to do, all I want you to do is know who you are. Don't worry about how you're going to take care of yourself. Don't worry how you're going to put food on the table or get a paycheck or anything like that. He told them that at age four. Your only job is to know who you are. He did a really smart thing. He didn't tell them, you're going to work hard and grow old and have, maybe someday you'll get to have retirement. He didn't tell them that. He said, know who you are. And they, they became successful, did their thing, loved what they do, are very self-supporting, and he said to them, I will take care of you. I'll take care of you. Don't worry about that. How many of us were told that? No. Can this, can this right now be a new day? Could it be that that's true? And wherever we are right now, accept wherever we are right now. You don't need to be like me. I don't need to be like you. We're each a unique, divine emanation of the one power and one presence in all the universe, a unique expression. Why would I want to be like you? I would be fighting forever. I can't even do it. And it takes all of my focus right off of me onto trying to be something that I'm not. I'm me. You're you. It's like, can we just agree on that and set everything else aside so we can get on with the party and have a good time? Yeah. One of, Jamie, thank you. Thank you for being an example, Jamie, of living on purpose, living your dharma, doing what you came here to do, brother. Those words that you sing, the songs that come through you, they're all for each one of us sitting here because we can all relate to each other. We have all felt at some time in our life off, not enough, not perfect. And we need those reminders from each other. But Jamie can only do it like Jamie does. Nobody can do Jamie Lula like Jamie Lula does Jamie Lula. And that's why all those competition and greed and all that stuff doesn't serve us anymore. We're creating a world that works for all. And so my invitation right now is do not waste. Right? Do not waste another moment of our time, of our life, of our breath. Do not waste another moment to be who and what we each came here to be. We are the ones, you are the one. Come as you are, perfect, whole, 